Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to my channel. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like concrete stuff. We pour concrete floors, slabs, stamp concrete, pool decks all summer long. Eight or nine months out of the year. We live in Maine, so we get about three months, December, January, and February, where it's really cold. And it's, the jobs are very few and far in between in those months. We have to pick and choose our days. So we work pretty pr pretty hard and heavy for about nine months out of the year. It's getting fall time right now. You can see how the leaves are changing. So it's starting to get a little chilly. This is October-ish weather. We'll work through October, mostly through November. And then December gets gets a little, you know, the days get a little iffy for us. But I wanted to show you this video. And I want you guys to decide if using a front dump truck like this is faster than a rear dump where I actually control the chute. So in some cases, in some cases, I don't know. I mean, this does save a man from holding on to the chute and directing the chute, which is usually me. So it does kind of allow me to, to mag float our edges to our chalk line. We got snapped around the inside of the foundation. But in some cases, the driver, I feel like, is just a little bit slower and runs the concrete a little slower. Maybe maybe he doesn't get all the concrete up to height like I would if I was running the chute and directing the concrete. Yeah, I'd probably have him run it a little bit faster if I was holding the chute myself. Um, but I want you guys to decide and what you guys think is better, what you prefer. Do you prefer the front dumps like this? Or do you like a rear dump where you control the chute? You kind of tell the driver exactly how fast you want the concrete coming down the chute. So what we're going to do here today is, you know, we're pouring a two-car garage. I left it pretty much in real time. So the video is just over 20 minutes long. That's exactly how long it takes us to pour a garage like this and get it bowl floated. And then what we usually do is we'll leave, you know, one guy here, sometimes a couple guys here, depending on what we're doing the rest of the day. And then a couple of us will go either pour something else or we'll go set up jobs. You know, we might set up a pool deck. We might set up a slab for a garage. Uh, we might set up a patio, a walkway, an entryway. We may go get um, some other shoot grades on other jobs like this where we have to set, set the grade, snap our chalk line. You know, sometimes we're putting the styrofoam down in the wire mesh if they want wire mesh. This is our typical floor mix right here. We're using a 3500 PSI. We got water reducer in the mix. So for you slump police out there, that's why the concrete's a little bit looser than what most people pour is because we use water reducer in all of our pours so we can pour it loose like this. Just makes our life a lot easier. You ought to try it if you don't. There's no reason to pour a four inch slump here or even a five inch slump and you know think it's actually better for the concrete when you can use water reducer and put the what you know the, the concrete's typically about a three or a four inch slump add the water reducer to it and it comes out like this so you don't even need to add any extra water if you don't want to and then we have fiber mesh in the concrete and that's usually left you know that decision on whether to use fiberglass, fiber mesh in the concrete, wire mesh, or rebar in the slab is usually left up to the general contractor. We're just a sub on these jobs. So we're working for the foundation guy here. And the foundation guy is the one that gives the builder, or the developer in this case, the estimate for the job, the foundation. So they, when they do the foundation price, they give them the floor price too and all the details are in those estimates. So then we just get a call and say, hey, the floor's ready, go up and pour the floor. This is what you need. And most of the time they just price fiber mesh in the concrete floors on jobs like this. And that's, you know, if the sub base is packed really well, which they are on these jobs, if they're compacted really well, the floor's not gonna settle, it's not gonna move anywhere, it can't. If it does crack, it's not going to move outside the concrete walls. It's not going to. It's not like it's going to separate. Um, and we saw cut all our floors the same day, right after power trialing. So if it does get a shrinkage crack or a stress crack, it usually almost always cracks right in the saw cuts that we do with the soft cut saw or the early entry saw. 
So we don't have trouble with our floors cracking. I know I get a lot of comments about, you know, no wire, no rebar, that floor is going to crack all the hell. Concrete doesn't just crack all the hell. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think. And, and wire and rebar don't necessarily just prevent the concrete from cracking. It just holds it together when it does crack. If you have like a bad sub base, if you've got a soft sub base um, and, the, and the concrete wants to settle or if you're just pouring concrete on on uh, bad gravel or something you know then yeah your concrete's gonna tend to want to crack more but when you pour on stuff like this really hard compacted gravel you know they they fill those walls go down there about five feet deep in the ground so they dig out around the edges put the walls in and then, then when they fill that back in they have a compactor right inside the foundation as they're dumping gravel in there they're compacting that the whole way up so it's it's compacted rock hard and then they lay the styrofoam on top which gives you a nice smooth surface to pour the concrete on which reduces which reduces the stress if you can think of concrete when it cures when it starts to dry it, it wants to shrink a little bit so if the bottom of that concrete floor if the gravel is really rough then the bottom of that concrete wants to grab onto that roughness and it makes it really harder for the concrete to shrink evenly or shrink uniformly which causes stress in the concrete which tends to make it want to crack more so when you pour something on some a sub base really smooth like this there's a lot less stress lot less likely the concrete's going to have stress cracks um, and then when you saw like saw the floors like we do the same day we rarely ever have any trouble with cracks in our concrete uh, the fiber mesh is good because it's throughout the whole thickness of the concrete, the four inches. We use the microfibers so you can barely even see that they're in the floor. You could pick some of that concrete up with your hand, look at it, and hardly see the fibers in there. So there's no issues with finishing. They don't stick up all over the place like most people think. Those are the old time fibers and some people still use those, but we don't. We, we use these fibers in everything we pour. So if there is a job that specs wire mesh or you know a matter rebar, then we put it in. But most of these residential floors like this, they're just they're just all like this, and we don't have any trouble with cracking. So we're about almost eight minutes into the pour. You can see it's taken the the front dump concrete driver almost eight minutes to get this much concrete out. This is about a I don't know, around, I think I got around nine yards for this two bay garage. So we've dumped out about seven yards. It's almost a yard a minute, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. I think I'm faster. I think I could be faster if I was holding the chute, having the concrete come out a little quicker. Um, we don't really need two guys right at the chute kind of puddling or leveling out the concrete. Usually one guy can do that. So if I was holding the chute, with one guy kind of doing what Luke's doing right now. That's still only two guys at the shoot. That leaves one guy to mag edges, uh, one guy to kind of kind of shoot pads or shoot grays, I guess, if you want, like we just did in the middle. So I think I would be just a few minutes faster than this if we were comparing. All in all, it's going it's going pretty fast. So now what Darren and I are doing is we're going to strike our our pad in the middle to give us something to screed off from instead of just trying to guess at the concrete height like I've seen I've seen some guys in videos they don't even do this and I don't know they just it's weird it's weird how some of the guys pour floors but this is how we do it we use a we use a self-leveling laser we shoot grades on the outside we shoot a grade in the middle with the, with the laser to make sure the middle is where it needs to be and then we strike a pad like that to go by and now when we screed our concrete that's a 14 foot screed we have something to go by in the middle which is what i'm doing and then over on the left side of the video darren's using our outside pad that we mag to the chalk line and he's got something to go by so this gets our floors you know this also slopes towards the front a couple inches so we want to make sure the middle is an inch lower than the back and then the front is an inch lower than the middle Another good reason to use a laser. 
and then you can see how that concrete is you know it's we, what we call nice and flat but it's also sloping towards the front it takes literally seconds to screed a bay like that and then we'll jump up here screed out another bay Luke Luke in the back and the black is still kind of dumping some concrete we only really need one guy kind of we call raking the concrete or puddling the concrete behind us if you can get the concrete pretty close to the grade as you're dumping it out of the chute then one guy can can uh, rake the concrete behind two guys screeding like this and I don't know I've never you know we, we do screed concrete um, with smaller screeds like a 10 foot or under screed by ourselves sometimes but these bigger screeds like this I feel they're much faster with two guys who can who can kick screed kind of like we do I mean you can see that that bay that's probably what 12 13 by 14 foot bay right there it, it's, it takes under a minute to screed that much concrete and get it to where you need it. So we're up to about 11 minutes now in the pour. We got half the concrete screeded into where we need it. Still waiting for the truck driver to dump out some of the concrete here. You know, he's being careful too. He doesn't want to overfill it and he doesn't want to get too much concrete in there so we got to shovel stuff out so we'll usually stop him a little bit right here towards the end up here by the garage doors you know we're poking the concrete we're kind of vibrating that edge a little bit where the door is to make sure when we strip the form off it looks nice and smooth there there's no air holes and we set those forms right to grade again using the laser level we'll shoot marks on the outside and then we use our DeWalt hammer drill and we'll drill we'll drill eighth inch holes in there right through the boards and then we'll use tapcon screws and we screw the forms right onto the outside of the foundation and we'll strip those forms today too so this whole thing will be power trialed today nice and smooth it'll get a saw cut one down the middle right in between the garage doors north and south and then we'll split it again in half east and west so we'll split this floor up into quarters is typically what we do on a two-car garage. That seems to work good as far as controlling any cracks. So that'll all get done today, even though it's a cool day, cool fall day. Probably it's in the 50s right now. We're just starting to get to where we're using a little bit of accelerators in the concrete. They're not using warm water yet, usually around the middle of November. They'll start adding warm water. They'll turn the boilers on at the concrete plant and they'll put warm water in the concrete when they batch it out. And then they'll be, you know, warm to hot water on the trucks. Trucks carry between 200 and 300 gallons of water with them. So if we do need to add water to the mix to get it to where we need it, that, you know, they're adding in warm hot water. So that really helps the set times. And then we'll use some accelerators also to get make sure to get the job done the temperatures at night like I said this is about the middle of October here in Maine haven't haven't started to go below freezing yet but they're some of the temperatures are getting into the 30s at night and then some days it'll get up you know to 60 some will still hit 70 once in a while during the daytime but not very often the concrete when the temps when the air temps are in the 40s and 50s concrete doesn't set up very well on its own it just kind of sits there and takes hours and hours for it to set up before the concrete floor gets done so you got to kind of you got to kind of start giving it what I call you got to give it a little kick in the pants by <laughs> either using some warm hot water or accelerators or even both and then when when the temperatures get below freezing at nighttime then you got to start covering the concrete. You got to cover your sub base so when you show up in the morning, you know it should have should have blankets over the styrofoam or over the dirt to make sure that doesn't freeze. You pull them off, pour the floor, finish the floor, put the blankets back on the concrete. Try to leave the blankets on there, you know, as long as you can. A week is good to let that concrete cure up really good before it starts going into freeze thaw cycles on its own. And you definitely don't want to let, you know, fresh new concrete floors like this, you don't want to let any water freeze to the surface 
that could damage the surface down the road. You don't want to allow any, you know, freezing rain or ice or snow get on there and stay on there for any amount of time. You want to clean that right off. You just want to make sure you keep your concrete floors, slabs, whatever you're doing, patios, nice and dry during the freezing temps. You don't want any water to freeze to them. Fifteen minutes into the pour. We almost got this thing poured. So what do you guys think? You think we're going at a pretty fast pace? I mean, we're not we're not trying to move too fast. I wasn't timing the guys. I didn't tell them we were going to time this out or nothing like that. I just I just figured once I shot the video, we would we would see if you guys thought that using a front dump like this was actually any faster than using a rear dump. The same or slower. <laughs> You can see, if I told the guys we were going to time this we want, and we wanted to do it as fast as we possibly can, they would all be moving a little bit faster. And I'd be telling them to hustle a little bit <laughs> quicker. I bet we could shave, I bet we could easily shave, I don't know, seven, eight, nine minutes right off this pour if we really wanted to. What takes, so what takes the longest, I think, is number one, getting the concrete off the truck, get, you know, getting it down the chute, getting it kind of spread out. As you can see, it took seven eight nine minutes just to get the concrete off the truck and then probably the second thing is just bull floating this thing you know luke's just starting to bull float right now at the 16 minute mark and he i mean he could go fast if he wanted to but that's where that you don't really bull float fast you just want to take your time bull float nice and easy down and back on you know when we use water reducer in the mix with a slump like this, you just need to go down and back and then you set over. You don't need to keep going over the concrete. Plus, if you screed the way we do and your concrete's really flat, then you're not shoveling concrete into low spots or anything like that. Like I see a, I see all all kinds of stuff like that when I watch other concrete videos. Um, you just down and back nice and flat. You can see how easy that bowl floats. So bull floating probably takes the second longest, dumping the concrete out of the chute, and then bull floating the two longest things it takes to pour concrete floor like this. Luckily, we can reach all this bull floating from the outside. On bigger floors, you know, you got to bull float as you go, so that kind of slows you down a little bit more. I suppose we could have a little bit bigger bull float. That's a four-foot one, and I like the bull floats with the rounded edges like that. They tend to leave less deeper lines in the concrete as you push it and pull it back and then the guy bull floating too you can see how he's keeping that that edge of the bull float where either he's pushing it or pulling it that front edge of that bull float as low as possible that helps lessen the lines in the concrete too and we will, I mean, sometimes we'll try to go, I know a lot of you guys say go opposite of the way you screed and, you know, 90 degrees and all that stuff. But when you screed the way we do, we like, we don't have to worry about humps and dips in the concrete as far as bull floating goes. When you screed the way we do, we don't have issues like that. So if you do, then yeah, you probably want to turn the bull float and go east and west right here because of how we screeded the concrete. And that might help level the concrete out a little bit better or tell you if you got high spots and low spots as far as bull floating is concerned. But we've never really had any issues with that because of you can see how flat and how nice that concrete looks as it gets screeded out. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments about how the pour went. It's just over 20 minutes to get this garage floor poured. We'll get we'll get our tools cleaned up. Like I said, we'll leave a guy or two here. That sun's gonna come up, and hopefully this finishes up really nice today, kind of fast for him. And then move on to the next floor. We got another one in behind that concrete truck on the other side of the road. We got another big pour coming up. That's gonna be a house and garage. They're doing the foundation now. So that video will be coming up. We're gonna do both those floors the same day. We'll probably, I don't know if we'll tailgate them or pump them, but it depends on how the access is around the foundation. That'll be around 33 yards there for both those. So we'll see you back when we do that. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And we'll see you on the next one.